Yeah, no, I can't because I can't even watch the page. So, uh, I can everybody just mute yourself? Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome to the Lord Meher book reading today. We are on page number 1019, winding down activities. And in, this is from year 1929. After performing the opening ceremony of the new school building. He returned by truck to Merabad in the evening. The management of the school had inserted a full page appeal for donations in April 1929, issue of the Meher message. During April, Baba continued to give his constant company to the boys since he intended to go out on tour. There was the problem of what to do with the boys who remained behind after being in such close association with Baba. It would have been traumatic for them to return to the parents. Yet, all the same time, some of the parents might have objected if they had learned that Meher Baba was no longer residing at Mehrabad. Most of the boys were Hindus and the main reason their parents were happy to allow them to stay at Mehrabad was that they were under the direct supervision of a spiritual master. The problem was solved by a plan to teach the boys a technical skill. Baba decided upon printing and Vishnu and Jai Baba, Jal Baba were sent to Ahmednagar for a month to learn the necessary skills at Mohan Printing Press so that they would be able to teach the boys in Baba's absence. Baba even proposed setting up a printing press at Mehrabad in the future. On Monday 22nd, April 1929, Baba went to Nasik for another three-day visit with the women Mandali and then returned to Merabad, Chanji, and Rusab arrived from Bombay on 1st May to report to Baba about the sales of Rosaheb's book, which was so far disappointing. On Thursday, 2nd May, the Prem Ashram was situated to the family quarters, shifted to the family quarters near Arangang. Baba advised the children, remain here and continue the studies as usual. I will come back and after some days, see that there is no disturbance in the routine. Following Baba's instructions, Vishnu began teaching them the composing of type with the printing materials he had brought from Ahmednagar. Shirin Mai had come for a visit and left on 3rd May with Rupa Mai and Banaji Karani and Bomanji's relatives. On 4th May, Baba started, stated Bao Saib was a Chinese emperor in previous life and Jal Bai was his wazir. Both were opium addicts and its effect is still there. The Mandali as a whole were feeling confused as no one yet knew where Baba planned to go on tour or who he would take with him. On Sunday morning, 5th May, Bailey complained to Baba that all the men, all the men were fed up and bored.
Rosalie, can you read next? Eugene, can you read next? Thanks. Okay. Hearing this, hearing this, Baba replied, I did not know that. This is the first I've heard about it. He called Baidul and asked, are you feeling disgusted? Baidul denied it. Baba remarked, at least there is one man here who is not disgusted. Then he added, without explaining further. All right, in a day or two, I will set things straight. I will go into hiding and you will never be able to find me. I will get myself imprisoned for seven years. Pointing to Mastan, Baba remarked. My heart is full of joy when I see Mastan. I forget my own suffering when I see him. He is a king. He has neither lust nor mind, nor is Maya an influence on him. How beautiful is his state. Turning to the men, he added, your disgust is the result of all the chaos and confusion in your minds. And when I try to uproot it, you say you feel fed up. After a long tirade, Baba came to know that only Bailey was disgusted and he reprimanded him for wrongly including the others. The same afternoon at three o'clock, Baidul and Mehrabanpur left for Persia with six of the boys from the Mayor Ashram and the following day, Sorab Hansoshia and his son Dara went to Bombay and Nasik respectively. In Baidul's absence, Chanji and Rao Saheb were ordered to sleep by Baba's Jopti. Once, when Rao Saheb was on night watch, he heard a tremendous thunderous noise like a squall coming from inside the Jopti. After half an hour, Baba clapped and called him inside. Baba's face was bright red, his hair, hair in disarray, and he was perspiring profusely. He told Rao Saheb to massage his legs. After 10 minutes, Rao Saheb was told to leave. In the morning, Rao Saheb asked Baba about the incident. Baba revealed that one of his lovers was on a steamer that was about to sink. The lover had called on Baba to save them and Baba said he had to respond to his cry for help and prevent the boat from sinking. Daily discussions about where to travel were being held in the Jopti. Aga Ali, of course, wanted to accompany them, but Baba would not allow it. Lately, a change had been observed in Ali's behavior. He had begun disobeying Baba and openly flouting his orders. Yet Baba would still embrace him and speak lovingly to him. On Monday, 6 May 29, 1929, Aga Ali again broke one of Baba's orders, but Baba excused him. Afterward, Baba remarked to the Bondali, what times we live in, a sadguru succumbing to a boy. The next day, Ali Akbar was also disobedient, but this time Baba scolded the boy. Later, Ali Akbar refused to eat his lunch, despite Baba's persuasion. After a while though, he sent this message through Rao Saheb. Baba, I seek your forgiveness for troubling you. I am sorry, I will now behave myself and won't give you any further trouble. At this, Baba remarked, Ali's heart is very good. He is my man manjnun, but at times he is swayed by some kink in him. 
He is strong in the head, but sincere in the heart. Ro Rosalie, are you ready to continue? I, I know I stepped in when too quickly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is impossible to follow this game of wine because it gives, what is that, right? Oh, because it gives rise to such abnormal situations, which are beyond our intellect. I'm repeating, that's good. It is impossible to follow this game of wine because it gives rise to such abnormal situations, which are beyond our intellect. From the mind's point of view, things are both good and bad. Uh oh, wait a minute. I have to plug in here. Okay. Okay. I almost ran out of juice. Where am I? Um, From the mind's point of view. Okay. But from the spiritual viewpoint, from the mind's point of view, things are both good and bad. But from the spiritual viewpoint, good and bad have their place only in the darkness of illusion. Only by crossing both these limits can one gain the dazzling light. To destroy good sanskaras, bad sanskaras are needed in the process. If any objectionable action is committed, Ali's behavior is an example. It is considered bad in the eyes of the world. In the same way to dissipate bad sanskaras, good sanskaras are acquired. Even to contemplate such things is useless, as no one knows about his own sanskaras. And only after surrendrance to a sadguru is the right path found. For this reason, the relationship between the lover and the beloved is incomprehensible, because to the intellect, some things are favorable and some are not, where in fact there is no such thing as good and bad in the spiritual field. Age reminds the world. One cannot judge the results of Baba's work with the Prem Ashram boys because the outcome may not manifest in this birth or in the next, but after several births. But one thing is certain, once lit, the fire of love is never extinguished. Mm -hmm. The wind may diffuse its heat, but the heat of a raging fire one day engulfs the wind the intoxicated ones in the beloved's tavern will assuredly steal the winds of Maya. It is for this that the beloved has prepared them. I'm repeating that. The intoxicated ones in the beloved's tavern will assuredly steal the winds of Maya. It is for this that the beloved has prepared them. The following is Ramju's vivid description of the Persian boy, Ali Akbar. The intensity of Ali Akbar's love toward the master is unique. None can come to the intense level of his highly active love which always keeps him on the stir, restless. He is seldom seen in one place for long or sitting calmly. When Ali Akbar 
first joined Neher Ashram, he used to be quite disinterested in discussions about love for God and spirituality. He would not only show open disinclination for divinity, divine experiences, but used to fight shy of all such subjects and would remain as aloof as possible from meditation and concentration. But at the first exit of Aga Ali, the hero, Ali Akbar became all of a sudden surcharged with the divine grace of the master. He began to roll and reel in the dust, quite literally, as a fish just out of water, till he would come into the master's contact. I lost my place. He would begin to roll and reel in the dust, quite literally, as a fish just out of water, till he would come into the master's contact, whom he would try to enfold in his little arms, as furiously as a moth tries to devour the lamp. And there, there is a Go ahead, there, sir. Ramju, Abdullah, sobs and throbs. Ramju's diaries, Sufism, reoriented, Walnut Creek, 1979, page 530. We need a new page. Hi, Rosalie, I'm just doing that. Thank you. On Wednesday... 8 May 1929, Papa sent for the Hindu children at the school, most of whom were untouchables, and informed them about his coming journey. Until I come back, all of you stay at your homes. Don't go to Amanagar or anywhere else. If you find employment, good. Otherwise, pass your time in singing bhajans. When I call you back on my return, you should come without fail. I shall be back within a month or two. Do as I say and you will be benefited. I will do what I have to do. I will find employment for you as a driver, a mechanic, a printer, but for now, do as I say. All agreed, Shankarnath, Shankarnath, one of the seekers from the Sadak ashram, had returned from Benares some time before. He persisted in his resolve to stay in Maribad. Baba eventually agreed, but ordered him to meditate for 12 hours a day. Shankarnas accepted the condition. Baba left by car for Akbar Press at noon that day, accompanied by Ali Akbar, Bwasaheb, Chanji, Chagan, Hustaji, Masaji and Pesu. A, discuss a discussion took place over the destination of their journey. Suggestions were put forth, but none satisfied Baba. He concluded the discussion by stating his preference of going to Rishikesh. Ramju and Bailey had gone with the group to Akbar Press but then returned to Maribad. Ramji's wife and children stayed in Pune. Aga Ali, Chota Baba, Dastur, Rao Saheb, Sidhu, 
and the rest of the Mandalis stayed in Lower Maribad. And the other Prem Ashram boys, as well as Jalbai, moved back up the hill. Shoshane and Bomanji families stayed in the family quarters. On 9 May, Baba left Amanagar by car for Nasik, where he met Mera, Naja, Korshed, Sunamasi, Dalatmai, Walu, and Fraini, as well as Rustam and Padri. He sent Padri to Bombay, and Rustam was ordered to continue looking after the arrangements for the women Mandali in Nasik, while Baba was on tour in the north of India to the Himalayas. Rishikesh trip. 1929. We need uh, another page. There, here's the map. Where's she cash? The They're going to look. We see Georgia. Afghanistan, Quetta, China, and Rishikesh, which is in the Himalayas near Haridwar, which is on top north of India. And the quite a trip. Quite a trip. We're going clear to Quetta and return. And Coming clear to southern India, they're going. Oh, clear around, yeah. Nasik, Manmad, Kandwa. Uh, okay, they end up in Amanagar, Maribai. On Friday, 10 May 1929, Baba and the group took a bus to Manmad and then left on the Delhi Alalhabad Express for Hardwar. Along the way, Baba played games of chess and cards to pass the time. Near the village of Kandwa, an accident occurred. A man was struck by the train and severely injured. A large crowd gathered round the man. We need another page. Thank you, Rosalie. Uh, we go to the next reader. Eugene, would you like to read a page? Let me, let me unmute and make it bigger. Meanwhile, Baba disp dispatched Chagan to buy Chagan to buy some rice and dal from a vendor. Chagan thought to himself, a man has just been seriously hurt. All are rushing to his aid. Yet this Deva, God, feels hungry and wants something to eat. How can Baba be so merciless? Who could eat at a time like this? With these thoughts in his mind, Chagan made his way through the crowd to bring the food, but he could not return quickly because of the excited crowd on the platform. After some time, Baba lost his patience and sent Gustaji to look for him. And when Chagan returned, Baba admonished him for taking so long. Watching Baba eat, Chagan thought, outside a man is dying and inside divinity himself is quietly enjoying his lunch in peace. How can Baba be so cold? Baba gestured to Chagan. What are you thinking? Chagan replied that it was nothing. Baba shrugged and then spelled out. You only think of the man who is hurt, but you have no thought for me. How will you help him by thinking about him? Your sympathy is empty. It carries no weight. Sorry, I can't, oh, no, okay, good. Um, you see me eating food, but what do you know of what I am really doing for that man? 
if you believe that everything is in my hands and not a leaf moves without my will, then why don't you accept that whatever has happened to him and whatever will happen to him is according to my will? Your only duty is to follow my wish. Why give importance to your wish? I am eating this food, but it reaches the belly of that man. You can't see that. Remember, I am the benefactor of all. Your sympathy cannot do a damn thing. To fulfill my wish, you have to burn up your desires. Only then will you be fit to serve me. Baba then sent Chuggan to see what had happened to the injured man. Chuggan was dumbfounded at the scene which met his eyes. The man had not only regained consciousness, but he was enjoying a cup of tea. He was about to be removed to a hospital in an ambulance and a doctor remarked that there was no serious injury. He would be all right and be able to walk once his fracture was set. Hearing this, Chuggan repented for his thoughts. The fact was that Baba was not really hungry, but he pretended to be so in order to revive that man and to teach Chuggan a lesson about how he worked at times. Baba would go to such lengths to drive home a message to his disciples, sacrificing his own comfort and often, often spending hours in the process for their sakes. Reaching Delhi on Saturday, 11 May 1929, the group rested that night. They continued the next morning at 7 a.m. on the Peshawar Express into the mountains to Hardwar. The following morning, Baba walked to an isolated spot on the banks of the Ganges River, where he sat absolutely still for some time. To the Mondelez surprise, Baba then declared that his work in hard hardwire was over and he wanted to depart. Age was perplexed. What might Mayor Baba have been doing by sitting silently at this spot for so short a time? age wondered. Only one who has infinite consciousness can fathom it because the avatar's work touches every living and lifeless thing in, in his infinite shadow of creation. Every particle and every being is always before his eyes. From Hardwar, Baba proceeded to Rishikesh the same day Coming across a group of sadhus and sannyasis, Baba remarked, look at them. They wear long hair, apply ash to their bodies, put on ochre colored robes and give spiritual discourses. This is only an outward show. Within, they are merged in Maya. They are hypocrites. It is a sin to pretend that one is away from Maya. These so-called sadhus are full of desires, and have thoughts of eating, drinking, and wearing fine clothes. Outwardly, they show themselves to be sadhus, but inwardly, they are quite the reverse. They are merged in Maya. Baba concluded, only he who has annihilated himself is a real sadhu. Baba left Rishikesh by train for Quetta. On Thursday, 16 May, while dictating some points to Chanji in the train, Baba suddenly felt uneasy. He complained. Of heart pain. He complained of heart pain and turned ghastly pale. Restlessness overcame him. One moment he would want to sit down and the next he would get up. The month of May is the hottest month of the year in India. The railway compartment was overcrowded and stifling. Baba got down at Rory at 11.45 p.m. They slept on the open railway platform since the waiting room was crowded, but the noise at the station was so bothersome, they left and sought shelter in a near, nearby Dharamshala. Baba was unable to rest. 
and had frequent loose motions. The next day, 17 May 1929, Baba looked just as ill and the Mondali were naturally worried about his condition. Pia, can you read? Next. Thanks. No, I'm outside. I can't. Thank you. Okay. Mikhail, would you like to read? Thank you. Marvin, can you read? Thank you. Yeah. Let me know if my internet is, is okay. I think I lost this Please, Bob. Okay, Mom, your voice is coming and going. So I think today we pass. Sorry. But I hope you can hear us properly. Okay, so we can't hear you clearly. There's a lot of, like, it's coming and going and cracking. So today we... Uh, today you just listen um thanks marvin um uh, mahu can you read next if you're there yes i can but they were at a loss as to what to do what to, what to do to ease baba's suffering instead of asking for something for relief Baba instructed them to sightsee through the town. They were completely taken aback by his strange order and hesitated. None liked leaving Baba in this critical condition. Seeing their reaction, Baba remarked, quote, Always remember to stay above your heart's sentiments and wishes that are contrary to my orders. I have to shatter your minds and hearts to pieces. The greatest service is to obey me. Compared to my orders, your, your thoughts and emotions are nothing. You cannot serve me if you fail to carry out my words. You can only cause me greater pain." End quote. Reluctantly, the Mandali went to the riverside to bait while Baba rested under, under the shade of a tree there. After bathing in the stream and exploring the area, they returned. Baba then accompanied them to see the Sukar Barab, a large construction work on the Indus River. When they returned in the late evening, the heat was still intense. They started from Brahori for Geta. The train was again crowded and Pisu had to fight his way into their compartments. Footnote. It was the season of both the Hindus to Rishikesh and the Punjabis and Mohammedans to Rori where there is a shrine containing a hair from Muhammad's beard. Okay, continue. Pesu yeah. was so angry that he was at the point of fighting with one of the other passengers who refused to give away. Bobo intervened and stopped him. After the train was on its way, Baba 
um, reprimanded Hesu, reprimanded Hesu, quote, instead of conquering others, we should try to conquer ourselves. Striking out at our own wrath is more desirable than striking others. It is real bravery to control our temper and sheer weakness to be swayed by it, end quote. Bobo quit, don't be like the uh, sweltering heat of Rahori. Be like the cool climate of Keta. Bobo and the group arrived in Keta Quetta on the morning of Saturday, 18 May. Rossi Irani was on the platform to greet them, as was Pendu, who had been staying in Quetta for the past five months. Bobo was accom uh, accommodated in Rossi's house, where two little blossoms of the beloved's garden lived. Ross's daughters, Goher and Katie. Code, do you know from what distance I have come, especially to see you? Baba asked them, how fortunate you are. Five years before, Baba's disciple, nervous, had died in Quetta after Baba had left the city. But before Baba left, he had gone to the Parsi cemetery and marked the spot where Nervous was to be buried. Next one. Nervous was Bautal Shuri. Next, next please. Um, page 1026. The day after his arrival in Quetta in 1929, Baba visited Nervous Grave. And it seemed as if he had purposely come to Quetta to pay his respects to his dear disciple. <clears throat> Baba placed flowers on Nervous's tombstone <clears throat> and sat quietly for a while. Then, surveying the entire cemetery, Baba remarked, quote, those who are buried here are fortunate because of nervous. They, because of nervous, they are having the opportunity of seeing me today, end quote. Baba proceeded on a sightseeing tour of Quetta and the surrounding area and returned in the evening. Baba's health was noticeably better in the cool climate, but he was still suffering chest pains. On Tuesday, 21st May, on Baba's order, Rossi rented a separate house for the group where Baba began fasting on liquids. But the house was found unsuitable for Bobo's seclusion, so a search began for another place. Like other Mangali on past journeys, Chagan became a scapegoat for Bobo's yawding. Due to Bobo's frequent taunts, since the journey started, Chagan was becoming increasingly depressed. At 3 p.m. on 22 May, Baba criticized all, quote, no one gives me companionship. The Mandali have no thought for me. I am suffering with pain in my heart and I have to suffer additionally because of the Mandali not being in a good mood. No one has any thought for me. They only think of themselves. I can't tolerate this suffering anymore. It is killing me. 
you are all trying to kill me. Baba then, Baba then lambasted Chagan and, and Bao Sahib for four hours without letting up until seven that night. The situation was so distressful that the group dreaded what would happen next. Baba concluded this scolding. I fail to understand what Chagan wants me to do. He himself suffers and he makes me, he makes other, others suffer. What harassment I put up with. My health is very bad. You all know this. And on top of it, I have to pander to your moods. Now, if you want to stay, stay. Otherwise, pack up and get out. I won't tolerate this sort of behavior. After a few minutes, Baba remarked to the other men, quote, I troubled Chagan a lot. The whole night he keeps watch by my side. And when he is about to rest during the daytime, I don't allow him to sleep. What can he do? But what can I do? I don't like his sleeping and want him to be near me, but how can he maintain a good mood without the sleep? Therefore, neither of us is to blame. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Marsha, can you read this? Oh, okay. Elizabeth, can you read? I was reading, I just was muted. You asked me to read, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I thought you said no because you were muted. Okay, no, no, ahead. I was muted just by go accident. Ahead. Go ahead. Okay, this path is strewn only with hardships and only heroes can tread it. Many pundits are there to give lectures and to speak about philosophy, but only a hero can tread the path. It is like balancing oneself on the edge of a sword. What am I? to do. I have to keep you alive while jabbing my knife in your chest, which causes you to cry out, what can we do? This is our situation. Failing to have, failing to find a suitable residence in Keita, Baba remarked to Rusi, what is the use of your residing here when there is now no place for me to stay? You had better take your family and leave Keita permanently. There was hidden meaning as Baba's casual remark. Unfortunately, Rusi was only able to understand its significance some years later. On the evening of Thursday, 23rd May, 1929, Baba and the Mandalay left Keita by train and reached Bombay on the morning of the 26th. Kakabara, Bara, um, his sister Banube, and her husband, Maniki Confectioner, were waiting at the station to receive them. Kaka offered his car for Baba's use during their stay in Bombay. Baba went to Naroji Dadachanji's house where he had a bath and um, gave Darshan to a few visitors. He also visited Borjor Dawala's house. Oh boy, I think he's jumping. Okay. Okay, Baba went to Naro Naroji Dadachanji's house where he had a bath. You know, my screen keeps jumping around. Hold on, got a bath. I'm sorry.
He had a bar. Uh, you know, something my screen keeps jumping because I'm on an iPhone. So maybe someone else should read. You know? Let me see. Oh, I, I, let me see if I can go. Let me try again. Okay, Baba went to Naroji Dadachanji's house where he had a bath and gave darshan to a few visitors. He also visited Burjor Darwala's home. Pelamai was there and joined Baba and the group. Baba left Bombay for Maribad by train, arriving there at 11 a.m. on 27 May. He had traveled approximately 3,700 miles in 18 days. Baba had also been fasting since arriving in Keita 11 days earlier. Telegrams were sent to different Mandalay informing them of Baba's arrival. Wait. Wait just... Just continue, Masha. I had to, I am to scroll the page up and down, so that's what's happening. Okay. Um. Let me hold on. It's here. He traveled approximately three thousand seven hundred miles in eighteen days. Continue from here, please. Baba had also been fasting. Marsha, are you there? Yeah, I don't see her. Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, Elizabeth, can you read next? Thanks. Okay, I just have to change where I am. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, I've highlighted it. Baba has also been fasting since arriving in Quetta 11 days earlier. You can start from my telegrams. Or sent out. <clears throat> telegrams were sent to different Mandali, informing them of Baba's arrival at Maribad. Pelamai stayed for two days and was then ordered to return to Bombay. Rav Saheb and Chagan were told to sleep in Baba's Jopti. During the morning of Saturday, 1st June, 1929, Baba broke his fast with a little rice and dal. Kaikushru Masa, Sune Masa, Korshev, Prani, and Dali met Baba that day, and Baba discussed Kaikushru Masa's personal affairs with him. Soon after his return to Maribad, one day Baba went to the family quarters near Arangaon. He sent for Vishnu, who came running barefooted to Baba. After a brief discussion, Baba directed Vishnu to summon Rav Saheb. Vishnu was about to leave when Baba directed him, don't walk barefooted, take my chapal, chapel, chapels, 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 chapels. picked up Baba's sandals, touched them to his forehead and put them down again by Baba's feet. Master, he replied, I could never wear your holy chapels. Next page. Ten, whoops, 10, I don't say the top. The top just leave. Thereupon, Baba bitterly remarked to the others present, how unlucky Vishnu is. When I give him my chapels to wear, he just touches his forehead to them and puts them back. This type of worship and reverence pains me. By disobeying me, Vishnu does not worship me. He punishes me. And the sad part is that he thinks he is revering me not to keep my word and to worship one's own sentiments is sheer disobedience. Vishnu does not revere me. He reveres his own emotions and to him, they are apparently superior to my orders. Such things deeply pain me. Disturbed, Chuggan asked, are we not to consider your sandals as sacred? 
Every belonging of mine is sacred, Baba replied, and to have a feeling of reverence for them is good, but they are not more important than I am. My word is the most supreme. For that reason, revere my word rather than my things. While carrying out my wishes, let there be no room for the expression of your own emotions and feelings. Baba's mood changed and he then asked those presents, present, have you ever examined my feces? Some replied yes and some said no, but none could give a description which satisfied Baba. So he himself explained, you have no idea what my feces contain. In the beginning of creation, I defecated and all the suns, moons, stars, and universes came out. They are all my excrement, but just imagine when this dirty thing is so beautiful, how can you ever imagine my real splendor? You will lose your senses if you ever see even a glimpse of it. During this period, Vishnu's friend Nilu was studying in Bombay to be a doctor, but he would come to Meribad during his holidays. He arrived for a two-day visit on the first, and at that time, Baba remarked to the Mandali, you are unable to look after my health properly. I need a doctor here, as I intend to open a large dispensary. The doctor will look after me and also treat outside patients. Turning to Nilu, Baba pointed to the men present and commented, this whole lot is useless. When they are indisposed, I have to prescribe medicines for them. It is true that I am the doctor of doctors and I possess medicine for every disease, but that medicine is quite different. I want a doctor who can give relief to my patients. That sort of doctor must be here. The desire rose in Nilu to stay at Maribad, but Baba advised him, Mind your studies and don't think of coming here yet. Vishnu will keep writing to you, pestering you to come, but ignore him. Baba's apparent unwillingness strengthened Nilu's longing all the more, but it would be six long years before N N uh, Nilu came to live permanently in the beloved's garden. On Sunday, 2nd June, 1929, Sidhu complained to Baba, that contrary to his wishes, Aga Ali and Ali Akbar were conversing with the Mandali. Baba called the two boys and reprimanded them for their disobedience. Ali Akbar lost his temper and shouted back. <laughs> Baba warned him, if you don't want to remain here, you had better leave. In reply, Ali Akbar shouted that he was leaving. Baba snapped, motioning, if you want to go, go. Who cares? When are you leaving? Ali Akbar remained quiet, and Baba then consoled him as well as Ag Aga Ali. You two don't know how lucky you are to be here. For God's sake, listen to me. By listening to me, you will be able to love me. All this time, Ramaji, who was from Erangoun, was one of the older students in the ashram school. Baba was very fond of Ramaji and had forbidden him to marry but disregarding that advice, the boy's father had arranged his marriage and Ramaji had to comply. On June 5th, as the wedding procession was on its, I need more words. Was on its way as the wedding procession, where is it? I'm looking for where we left off. Oh, on June 5th, as the, as the wedding procession was on its way through Erangoun village, one bullock pulling a cart full of guests suddenly collapsed and died. Then he heavy rain began falling, postponing the ceremony. The river near the village was flooded and while crossing it, three or four persons were trapped. However, after some time they were rescued. Meanwhile, Baba had been inquiring about Ramaji. He finally instructed Bao Chima 
to tell Ramaji to come and take his darshan at least once before getting married. Otherwise, Ramaji would have to suffer terribly. Ramaji was informed of Baba's wish and the next day he sought Baba's forgiveness. Seeing him weep, Baba forgave him and explained, you have no idea what a great loss you have suffered by disobeying me. But since you have repented, you are pardoned. Had that bullock not died, your bride would have died. Do you have any idea to what extent I am troubled in order to save your bride? Next page. Baba then asked, how did the bullock die? Was it sick? It was very strong and quite healthy, Ramaji answered. It just suddenly fell down and died. You will never understand it. Remember not to break my orders again. Ramaji felt deeply sorry and he wept much at Baba's feet, but Baba's embrace calmed him. On the fifth, portion, portions of Rao Sahib's Persian book Kashful Kakayake were read aloud, including a passage about Shamsi Tabriz. After searching for God, Baba commented, how can you search for something which you haven't lost? Upasani Maharaja's fifth, 59th birthday was celebrated on Friday 7th, June, 1927. The Mandali gave Baba's bath, gave Baba a bath in the morning. He was then taken in procession to Arangaon on a palaquin, which was attached to a tonga driven by the Mandali. Bhajan singing was held and a feast served. Many came that day for darshan, including Chanji's brother, now, now Roji, and Kaka Bariya, Manubai, and Manakji. The program lasted long past midnight. The women Mandali Singh and Nasik were feeling the pangs of separation. They were looking forward to Baba's arrival from Keta, but he had gone on to Maribad to be with the four Prem Ashram boys. Although since his return, Baba had kept the boys aloof from him, he decided to set up a special section just for them. It was established on 8th June and Chuggan was appointed their watchman. By this time, Rao Saheb was fed up with the boy's behavior, but Baba kept him as manager of the new Prem Ashram remarking, these youngsters are testing your patience. They are doing you much good, but you cannot understand it. The best boys become the worst. After these arrangements were made, Baba left on Sunday, 9th June, 1929, to visit the women Mandali and Nasik. Chanji, Bao Saheb, Kakushrumasa, and Sunamasa accompanied him. Welcoming, welcoming him back with happy smiles, Mera, Naja, and Korshed hung a garden of flowers they had woven around Baba's neck. In his absence, the women, the women would pass their spare time preparing adornments for Baba, and on his arri arrival, they would dress him in them. At times, they would make a crown, a gown, or a robe, and elaborate gar garlands. All of these items were drenched with a wine of a vintage none can record. The unequaled quality of their love and adoration cannot be described in words. Thank you, Elizabeth. Jay, can you read next, please? Yes. <clears throat> Baba went to see <clears throat> the Pandu Lina Caves in Nasik that evening. Liking the place very much, he remarked, this place is most suitable for the boys' meditation. Baba asked Rustin to seek the collector's permission to use the spot, but when Rustin inquired, he found out that the place was outside the collector's jurisdiction. The next day, Baba visited two more shrines in the hills some distance from Nasik. One was, in giant, one was a giant temple, and since it was under a trust, 
it too was not available for the purpose of meditation. The other shrine connected with Lord Ram was on a very steep hill. Legend had it that Ram had stayed at this place during his advent. Finding that no steps led up to it, however, it was thought to be too hazardous to climb. That evening, Rustam took Baba to see the Gangapur waterfalls. There, Rustam confided to Baba his desire to make a movie. The idea of a film has been in my mind for a long time, he said. I've met Dada Saheb Palke, a director, and he is willing to help me in the, with the financing. My idea is to portray spiritual themes through films, something the public has never been exposed to before. It will also be the best medium for spreading your teachings throughout the world. Baba liked the idea and permitted him to pursue it. Rustam was greatly encouraged and the Mandali were excited about the plan. After staying in Nasik for two days, Baba returned to Maribad by train on 11 June. Immediately upon his arrival, he was informed that Ardashir Irani had left. More words? had left for Persia. I thought of putting him on the path, Baba remarked, but he left. What a fate. He was not destined for the path. Baba then visited the four boys in the new Prem Ashram. Finding Rao Saheb quite depressed, he asked the reason. Rao Saheb explained, I do not like the attitude of the boys toward you. Those among them who had loved before have now turned into mischievous devils. Ali Akbar is their ringleader and corrupts the other three. The boys who loved you so much now disobey your orders. It is so disappointing after all your efforts on their behalf. Baba consoled Rao Sahib. <clears throat> this is the second state of love. Don't let it trouble you. <laughs> It is meant to teach you tolerance. This stage of love will come to an end. Have patience. Next page. <clears throat> when Baba visited the boys ashram the next day, he rode a bicycle for the first time in several years. The four boys were delighted watching him. After this incident, there was a decided change for the better in their behavior, and Rao Saib's heart was gladdened. On Wednesday morning, 12 June, 1929, Gadikar arrived bearing flowers and sweets with the happy news that he had passed his BA exam. Gadikar was sure he had failed, even though Baba had assured him he would pass. Raya and Chintan, 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 Chintan Rao came the the same morning to invite Baba to attend Dr. Sate's wedding in Amannagar. Baba declined, but that same evening, he went to Arangaon with the Mandali to attend the wedding of Dagdu Shinde, one of the boys formerly in the ashram school. Baba heartily embraced and kissed the lucky groom. While Baba was taking tea with Walu Pawar's house, Walu Pawar's house in the village, Nusirwan and Kaka Chinchorkar arrived. Baba was pleased to see them and praised them for helping him financially, remarking, it is in times of such crises that great spiritual work, oops, where is it? Um, oh yeah, great spiritual work is done. It is also a time of test. He then dis discoursed about desires. <clears throat> desires are harmful both ways, when fulfilled and when not fulfilled. For instance, a person has a desire for sex. Overcome with intense longing, he has relations with someone of the opposite sex and fulfills his desire. What then? After the action, one is dejected. Why, when one's desire has been fulfilled? It seems so strange. 
but there's nothing strange about it, for that is the eventual result of expression of his desire, which brings on disappointment and dejection. Once a des desire is fulfilled, there is another desire that arises, ready to be satisfied. When that desire is satisfied, another is there, and so on. It is not easy to escape the clutches of one's desires. Only perfect masters can destroy the desires of their devotees, disciples, and those on whom their grace descends. On the 13th, when Gulmai and Adi Sr. arrived in the evening, Baba for the first time mentioned establishing a trust in the name of the Prem Ashram boys. He proposed transferring ownership of the hill from Adi's father, Kansaheb, to the trust. Adi and Gulmai tried to persuade Kansaheb, saying Baba was willing to buy the property, but Kansaheb refused. It would be seven years before Kansaheb himself agreed to give the property to Baba. <clears throat> on Saturday 15 on Saturday 15 June 1929 Baba began spending the night at first he decided to stay in the underground crypt cabin but due to heavy rainfall and the leaking uh, and the leaking tin roof he slept in hall number 2 in the water tank reservoir he appointed Gustaji and Chanji to be his watchmen they slept in one of the sheds used to store furniture nearby. When Baba was in the crypt cabin, Gustaji slept inside it, while Chanji slept in Duster's former room in a Tata shed 100 yards away. Bairam and Pesu arrived the next morning. Baba made arrangements for Bairam to study photography in Punan, and he returned there to per pursue that career. Nusirwan was arranging the printing of Ramju's book, Sobs and Throbs, <clears throat> at his <clears throat> Mohan Press in Aminagar, and that day brought a photographer named Nagesh Parke to take Baba's photo for the book. Baba posed on the veranda of the Makan, and photos of Chota Baba and Mastan were taken as well. Baba was playing chess every day at this time with Chanji, Rao Saib, and others. During a game of chess on the 16th, he commented again that Rumi and Shams were also fond of chess and would do their spiritual work while playing. Baba was doing the same. On 21 June, he played two or three games of chess, but he seemed distracted and played indifferently. He explained, while playing chess for the past few days with Chanji, I have been going to several places and been doing a lot of work. A spiritual seeker named Biharalal Gang Gangaram Agwa Agrawal, who resided in Aminagar, came to Mehrabad on Monday, 17 June 1929. Biharalal Biha had visited before, but at that time, Baba had told him to renounce all and then return to him. He had come after doing as Baba had instructed. Bihal Rilal requested to Baba, please do not send me back now. I am fully prepared to stay with you. Baba kept him at Maribad for seven days and then called him up the hill at 1.30 p.m. on 23 June, where Baba instructed, go to Hazra Baba Jan and then to Dunia, Duniwala Baba, remain at each master's place for a month. Beg for your food and eat, as, eat it as my prasad. I am there too, so don't worry about anything. After two months, come back to Maribad. I will keep you secluded in my jopti for two months, during which time you will fast only on milk. Next page. Oh, that's it for today, Jay. Thank you. Thank you.